a video on some game that I've been given. Um, so, um, I've been given some game and um, I had to pluck it. So, as you can see, I've got progressively better with the plucking. So these are quite acceptable for me and these not so much. So, I was kind of thinking uh, what I wanted to do and for a long time um, well, I got some pheasants last year, and I comfed the legs and roasted the breasts, um, and they were delicious. So I'm going I'm going to do comfed uh, pheasant legs again, uh, and then there is a uh, Spanish dish uh, where they preserve uh, partridges. Yeah, so these are partridges, those are pheasants, uh, where they preserve uh, partridges in um, in a jar uh, with some olive oil and some white wine and some peppercorns and some bay leaves, and kind of cook it, uh, put it raw in the jar and then boil the jars in um, in a pan of water uh, for an hour or they might even roast them but I'm going to do it in a pan of water and then it kind of um, preserves them like it would do like uh, comfy duck legs uh, like you get in France so that's what I want to do with the partridges I'm going to save a couple the two rough ones I'm going to have for my tea tonight but the nicer ones um, these here uh, we're going to going to do that method, but I'm going to do one with the olive oil and the white wine and the peppercorns And then I'm going to do one in um, Fat and it's going to be lard uh, Because I'm rendering down some fat at the moment and so lard homemade lard is just as good in my opinion as um, as, a, as, a, as a duck uh, Fat um, maybe not just quite as good as goose fat um, But on a par with duck fat, I think um, lard a good lard is on a par with that and it says you cook them for an hour i don't think those legs are going to be tender in an hour i think the breast will be i think the breast will be tender after an hour's worth of simmering uh, in some oil uh, or some uh, some lard uh, but i don't think the legs will be so what i'm going to do is i'm going to comfy the pheasant legs and these partridge legs and i'm just going to cook the breasts at uh, the crowns in the jar and then we'll be able to fit two crowns in one jar so that's kind of quite good so one jar I'll have two crowns uh, and the olive oil and the white wine and the other jar with the other two crowns will have the uh, duck fat in uh, kind of that way so uh, what we're going to do so it's just some case of not really never so I'm going to give these a wash as well just to kind of get rid of any kind of other things that are on because some of the hairs are uh, some of the feathers are stuck but they're not uh, attached so they just kind of need a bit of a wash and we just need to we're going to take the legs off so i'll quickly show you what i'm going to do with this leg look those out there so like you always do with all poultry legs down there you have to be delicate with these because they're, they're little birds. It's not like a chicken. So I'm just going to tease them away from the body and then pop them off, cut around the back of the there. Get that sc scalp a bit of meat off there. And that, like that. And you see, you can still see what I'm doing. I've done this kind of thing before. I'll just take these legs off and then we'll marinate the, the legs, all the partridge and the pheasant legs overnight. Just neaten that up, get them that. Marinate them uh, with we'll just a uh, bit of salt and pepper overnight. And we'll get the scissors and we'll whip that off. And then we'll just be left with a nice turkey, uh, turkey crown. I was cooking turkey yesterday, that's why I said turkeys. But the catering is finished now for Christmas. All the catering I have to do now is just on Christmas Day. And it's good that I've opened that up because we still have the heart and a bit of some of the guts in there as well. So they all need a wash. So I'll do that. And um, I'm, I'm, I can't eat the pheasant, legs, uh, pheasant breast this week, so I'm going to backpack those and freeze them. Uh, but we're going to comfy legs and remove any kind of feathers that we can come to in the way. We're going to marinate those and cook those. So I'll do a bit of prep and then we'll come back when we're at the stage of putting things in jars and marinating legs. Uh, I'm not going to make any game stock. I'm going to throw that away, I think. Yeah, I'm going to throw that away. But as you can see there, 
in your seed, those are the kidneys. So you could actually roast that and then have um, scoop out the kidneys and have that on, that on toast. That'd be very nice because I had that when I did um, when I done chicken legs in the past. And that was very nice. But anyway, so that's that. Do a bit of prep, get a few things ready, and then we're back. Right, I can't find a um, suitable recipe for the um, Spanish partridges cooked in olive oil, so I'm going to wing it. Yeah, it's pleasant, it's winging. Uh, right, so, uh, first of all, we're going to uh, marinate the... Um, let's whip that off. Just going to uh, marinate the... Um, Pheasant and partridge legs overnight, ready for confiting tomorrow. This will just um, draw out some of the moisture and they'll just be a little bit firmer for the confiting tomorrow. So just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I'm not going to put garlic in. I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan of garlic, if I'm honest. It's nice, but sometimes it just makes me extremely dehydrated. So, a little bit of salt, not too much, that'll be enough, and then some pepper in the pepper milk, hopefully if there's pepper in the pepper milk there is, pepper for flavour, and also it um, stops, um, what we call it, stops, um, stops uh, bugs and things with uh, pepper, so a little bit of salt in there, and then we'll put legs on top of each other, like that, so, just like that, and then cover it, and then, over that, I'm going to cook them all together, but that, that'll be fine. Cover that with a bit of um, cling film, and then that will be that. So, Charles, um, this one's going to be the uh, Spanish one, uh, Spanish um, preserved partridges. So, um, bay leaf, a little bit of salt, and then whole peppercorns, I think. So it's going to be in there a while. So, a few peppercorns, I might as well put some peppercorns in with this comfy one as well, and a little bit of salt. Right, so, I'm not going to use vinegar, I've got some cheap white wine that might as well get used up. I might put some white wine in with the um, comfies as well, but anyway, so. White wine, I'll put some in there as well, can't see why not, and we'll use what we've got. Too much wine. Not too much wine in that one. Uh, yeah, alright. Be alright. I'm not going to use all that wine. So maybe half a glass of wine and then top up that one with oil. So, I suppose, the wine will, what we call it, the wine will, a bit more in, the wine will mix with the juices from the, ooh, and we just need to do that, just to make sure that the olive oil gets everywhere. So, I suppose we could always put a bit more on after we've cooked, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, top of that, wipe off the finger, and then I've got some melted lard, and no cloth, so I'll just be more careful with this, so hopefully it'll just be able to pop straight in from the container. I won't get into the mess from the bottom. There we go. Stick my finger in there as well, just to make sure that we don't. Don't need 
you can have air bubbles. Do you know, after it's cooked, I can always top them up a bit. I can always take the lid off. It'll still be hot, and we can just add a bit more fat. If it looks like there's not enough liquid in there to cook them. <coughs> Couple of lids. Those like that. Yeah, they look fine. So lids on. And then that pan full of hot water, which I don't need. Around my hands. Make sure the lid's tight. Will that fit in there? No! It needs to be a deep pan. Ah, rubbish. It'll have to work. Now you've got a deep pan. It'll have to do the job. It should be okay. It should be okay. So, tight lids, cold water, up as far as we can, and then uh, lid on. Bring it slowly up to the boil because the um, we don't want the water to boil too quickly. Can you really see that? We don't want the water to boil too quickly because then there'll be a different uh, temperature in the internal, uh, internally in the glass jars as there is externally which may cause uh, the glass to explode, which we don't want. So, cold water, and bring it slowly up to the boil, so the water um, makes the, um, the jars slowly heat up, so we have a, an even expansion of the glass, and we don't get any cracks or shatters or anything like that. Uh, and I think that's it. So, slowly up to the boil, which will half an hour or so, 45 minutes, and then at a simmer, uh, a gentle simmer, for an hour and then we'll let them go cold and then the, everything should be cooked in there and preserved as well fingers crossed but I'm not going to eat them for a few months because they're going to be better after a few months so uh, probably it's not going to be partridge season uh, by the time we uh, look in these jars but anyway it's always something you can do next year or something again I might do again next year right so they have slowly come up to the simmer and they have had an hour gently cooking. It looks like there's enough oil and fat in there and it's covered the, um, the birds. So I think they're going to be okay. Um, oil and a bit of the fats kind of spilled out into the um, into the water. That's fine. We'll just let that cool down just a little bit. It's a little bit too hot at the moment. I don't want to take them out of the, uh, of the water before it cools down a little bit and then we'll just give them a give them a clean off and then we'll put them in the cupboard and we'll see uh, we'll see what they're like in a couple of months uh, but I think that's interesting um, so yeah I've decided I'll, I'll put this a I'll put this half we'll do it in two halves this video and I'll, I'll put up uh, this half of the video um, soon uh, because it's, it's kind of game season and if you want to try it it's probably it's the right time to kind of do it um, and then and then the tasting will be a part two you know sometime in the future uh, when I look through a cupboard and go, ooh, uh, partridge. But there we go. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and I'm sure it'll be delicious. So there we go. These are the partridges. That's the duck fat, well, the poultry fat one, and that, and the lard, and that's the uh, olive oil one. Um, looks all right. Looks all right. I'll have to see how it turns out in a couple of months. Um, I can't tip it because the olive oil's liquid. But that one's that one's all right. Maybe a little bit too much wine. Maybe a little bit too much wine. Maybe it would have just been nice in the um, in the lard cooking it that way. Uh, but it looks like it's cooked all the way through. So maybe less of a slightly less of a cooking time next time. I'm getting some more um, sometime after Christmas, so I'll have another go. So maybe. Maybe we'll open these after Christmas when the other partridges arrive and then I'll see what I think and then maybe kind of do it again uh, and maybe adjust the recipe. Um, that's probably too much wine. I mean, it's, it's poached that rather than cooked it in the fat and I think it'd be nice cooked in fat. This one differently, um, but we'll kind of see. I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be more olive oil uh, but I'll do a bit of research. But we'll see. It'll be nice anyway. 
anything cooked like that's going to be nice anyway, isn't it? But we'll see after Christmas. Um, I, I don't know what the optimal kind of maturing kind of would be it, you know, because things tend to improve when they're cooked like that over time. Certainly jams and jellies and all that kind of stuff uh, and chutneys improve with flavour. So and confit, I, I presume, uh, have the same kind of mature, kind of bit, go a bit more gamey. But we'll see. So confit, um, peasant and partridge legs. So they have been in the salt overnight. Just get rid of the excess liquid off them and then into um, this is oh, be fine. this is uh, lard it's also um, I was cooking turkeys for work so it's also the, um, the, f uh, the skin and the fat from the, from the turkeys that kind of came out I kind of thought it's quite a well, it's a, uh, a, a bird fat so I kind of saved that and I kind of thought that would be kind of quite nice to, um, well I, um, I rendered it so I, I minced up all the, uh, all the skin and, uh, and then kind of rendered it down. I'll just turn that one over that way I think. I just rendered it down and then I've used uh, that in there and then there's some of the, the nice lard that I made. So it's going to be nice. I didn't want to waste that turkey. Uh, but anyway, so legs in the partridge. The partridge legs will cook a lot quicker, so they can cook. They'll come out first. But we'll just keep an eye on them as they cook. There's always more feathers to pull out. Always more. Just pat them dry into the fat and slowly, slowly, slowly cook. If the pan, if you haven't got a thermometer. I wouldn't even know what temperature to, to, to cook them at. Um, I just know it's about how hot the pan feels on the outside. And if you can't keep, if you can't touch the pan on the outside, then you know it's hot enough. And, and as long as the the oil's not boiling or moving around too much, then you've kind of got it at the right temperature. And then we'll just sit and slowly braise away in the fat, and then we'll let them go cold in the fat. And then we'll put them in some, well, cool in the fat, and then we'll put them in some nice clean storage jars, and then we'll have some preserved game meat in the cupboard for when we want it. Partridge legs should work well. I had partridge last night for my tea, and it was lovely. Uh, and, the, and the legs were the legs were good, but it could have done to be a little bit more tender. So I'm thinking that the Comfy in the mid fat is certainly going to be the way to go. So, that. Slowly, slowly, slowly cook. On the sm generally on the smallest, um, if, you, if you work on gas, generally on the smallest gas jet, on the tiniest amount of gas, once they're up to temperature, and then they can just sit and slowly, um, slowly cook. If they, they have, they're going to have a habit of uh, contracting as they cook. Uh, so, it you might need to add a little bit more uh, fat because it looks like they're all covered at the moment but they might want to puff up a little bit and then you might need to add a little bit more fat but that's fine that's just not what happens you just need to keep an eye on them right it's not really a kind of thing where you can uh, start them off cooking and then disappear off out for a couple of hours um, you really need to watch these keep an eye on them you don't have to stand here and watch them for two or three hours but you just have to keep an eye on them, kind of go off and do something else, check them every 20 minutes, half an hour, just see how they're doing. Right, so the uh, pheasant and partridge legs are cooked and nice and lovely and tender. So, I've sterilised a couple of jars with boiling water, and it's just a simple case of putting the legs in a jar and then pouring the hot fat over the top of them. There will be some juice at the bottom of the um, bottom of the pan, um, which makes really nice gravy. Or you could, add, you know, it's not really going to save it. To save it seems a little bit pointless to use with the with the with the game. But if you were, I don't know. I suppose I had. If you were 
taking off the legs and keeping the breasts um, for a um, for itself. You could take the stock at the bottom of this and then use it to, um, to make the sauce for the breasts. That would work. That would work. But I'm not going to save it for I don't know how long I'm going to have these in storage. Maybe six months before I get around to eating them. So just push them in. There's another one. There's another one. It's a lot. It's going to make a nice meal with that. I could pretend I'll have company coming around, but I can't imagine that many of my friends would want to eat partridge confit. So it's going to be just for me now. Will these fit in here? Just, just with a little bit of a bit of pork rate, and will I have enough fat to cover them? We'll find out. That might need a bigger jar. That might need a bigger jar. Uh, I might just have to snip off that bone at the bottom. We'll just get some scissors. Just, can you see, yeah, there's just a bone at the bottom, we'll just snip that off so it fit better in. Ah, there's a bit of, there's a scallop there for me. Mm -mm -mm. So as long as you do everything and this is all nice and hot, they will stay sterile for months. So when the game season ends, there'll still be a bit of game in the summertime. There again, I don't really think eating comfy is the kind of thing you want in the summertime, but anyway. Will that just squeeze in there? It will do. I'm going to jam it in. I don't need to worry about them being that presentable because they're only for me. In that way. Right, that's fine. Right, so. Fat on top. As you can see, down the bottom of there, there is the, the stocky jelly, which I don't want in the jars. I'm going to use that for something else. So, I'm just spoon the fat onto the top so that everything is nice and submerged. I mean, the jar's going to be really full, but it'll be fine. I might just have to... Poke that down. There we go. My fingers are clean. Right, so lid on, clamp down. They won't properly seal, but the fat will keep any any bugs and bacteria out of there. So there we go. Put them somewhere cool, and they will last for months. Right, so 
these are the comfort legs which the partridge ones looks good they're completely com completely covered um, bit of bone sticking out the top of the pheasant one but that should be all right everything was sterile when it went in and it cooked uh, so any kind of uh, bugs or bacteria or mold um, should have what we call it should have been killed in the what we call it, in the kind of process um, yeah we'll just have to see how they turn out I have got some hopefully more pheasants and partridges arriving after Christmas so we'll kind of see we'll see if I want to do any more um, don't think many of my friends would want them as gifts to be honest maybe it's just a thing for me but anyway there you go it's pretty straightforward don't have to use um, parfait jars, killer jars uh, you can use uh, any big jars that you can get your hands on with, as long as they're nice and clean and they've got a, a lid with a good seal on uh, you can do it with any jar you like